Welcome back. Today we're going to look at exponential growth and decay. Which are almost uh, the same thing. Uh, we'll see that they're, they're really at the same basic idea. There's just one, smile different, uh, one, one small difference between the growth and, and decay situations. Okay, so to start with, uh, the idea with exponential growth is that the more we have of something, the faster it's growing. So that is the rate of change depends on how much we have to start. If something is growing linearly, then uh, between now and five years, it will grow the same amount as it will between 10 and 15 years. If we have a set time frame, the change in how and the population, if you want to think about it, or the change in how much we have, is the same over any time frame. In exponential growth, uh, the how much uh, extra population we get changes as well over time. Uh, as the population grows, it grows faster. So you'll, you're used to seeing maybe something that looks like this, right? So it's called exponential growth because uh, it follows an exponential function, an e to the x, or a version of e to the x. Right? So as time goes on, if we look at a five-year period, it would grow just a little bit, but then a five-year period way over here, it's going to grow way more. And so these things uh, are, are generally uh, an exponential function. And, and actually, let's take a minute and think about why that is. This will lead us uh, really to, we'll talk more about this when we look at differential equations a little bit in the future. But when I say that the the growth rate depends on how much we have. Uh, what I'm really saying is, if I have some unknown function y, then the derivative of y, the rate of change of y, and right, how quickly y is changing, the slope of the tangent line of the function y, well, that's going to have to depend on, or depend on uh, how much, sorry, uh, how much y actually is. Right? So if y is the population at time t, then the rate of change of y is going to be related to how much of the population we currently have. And what we're actually going to say is we have this constant, right? So this is really, what we're, what we're really saying here is the rate of change is proportional to the current amount. And that's what proportional means, right? It differs by a constant. So this is our constant of proportionality. This is the constant. If y is the population of the amount, the rate of change of y is proportional to y. So the population is proportional, the rate of change of the population is proportional to the current population. The more we have, the faster it's growing. That's really what's happening. So if we look at that, and we'll be able to solve this. This is a fairly standard, uh, straightforward beginning differential equation, and we'll look at that and we'll solve that for y later on when we look at some, uh, some of the basics of differential equations. But for right now, we can notice something that actually works. Right? So if we have dy dx is equal to ky. And I want to say find a function whose derivative is that original function, but multiplied some con by some constant. I'm going to point out what y could be. If y is equal to e to the kx, then the derivative of y is e to the kx times the derivative of the exponent. The derivative of the exponent is k, so I get k e to the kx, but e to the kx was our original function y, so I end up with ky. Derivative of y is a constant times y. And that's great. We can add one other thing here to it though. If this had some constant, some other constant out front, then this would still work, right? So if this had some other constant, which we'll, we'll call y sub 0, and we'll see y in just a, a little bit, 
But if we have some other constant, y sub 0, out front, then the derivative, that y0, still follows along. The k still comes down as the derivative of the exponent. And that's still k times y. That is the y right there. So that's still ky. Later, when we talk about differential equations, we'll, we'll be able to discover that that is, in fact, the full solution to this differential equation. So y equals y0 ke to the kx, which is why we call this exponential growth and decay, uh, because the solution to this differential equation, where the rate of change is proportional to the population, is an exponential function. Okay, so y equals y0 e to the kx. So why do we call that y0? Because if I plug x equals 0 in, then I get that y is equal to y0 e to the 0, and e to the 0 is 1. So y0 is the y value when x is 0. So y0 is the x equals 0 amount. And we're usually thinking about these things as amount or population. Um, so we should think about this as the initial amount. How much we're starting with when x equals 0. A lot of the times we will actually be thinking about x as a time, as t. So we'll see, we'll see y equals y0 e to the k t, where time is our variable, because it's a population at, at time, or an amount at time t. Those are, uh, that's what we'll use most of the time. It doesn't have to be, right? It, uh, it's just a variable, but t we'll use as our, as our, uh, as a variable to indicate time. All right, so let's just look at a few things. Suppose that I say it's exponential growth. Suppose that I say that the uh, is a, popu a population of a city. Suppose that I say that the pop uh, p of t is the population of the city at time t. At time zero, wherever we start measuring, it doesn't matter what what year it is. But suppose that we say that p at zero is 2,000. The thing about these, these problems is one piece of information is not enough. It's just like with a line, right? If I, have, if I give you one value, if I give you the y-intercept, that's not enough for you to figure out what the whole line is. You need another value later on to then allow you to extrapolate it across the entire range. The same, a similar thing is going on here. One piece of information is generally not enough. Uh, to help us figure out everything. We also need to know what's happening later on. Suppose that we say that in two years, the population grows, has grown to 4,000. All right, so that's telling me that P at 2 is 4,000. Time, the population at time 2 is now 4,000. Now these are not linear growth, so th what that means is that the population in four years is not 6,000, right? We went up 2,000 in the first, uh, we, went, we started with 2,000, we went up 2,000 in two years. Two more years is not going to be 2,000 more because when exponential growth, things are moving up. It's a concave up function, uh, so the rate of change is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So this will be more than 6,000 in two more years. The question, though, is how much? What is p at 6? Where will that be in, in two more years? So we can do a couple of things uh, to figure this out. So let me uh, save the important things here. It's exponential growth. Population at 0 is 2,000. Population at 2 is 4,000. We want to know what is population at 6. Well, we're told that population at time t is an exponential function, which means that, so now rather than y0, I'm going to write p0. 
it will be P0, that is the amount at time 0, e to the kt. That's what it means to be an exponential growth. P0, e to the kt. This is P0, so that is 2,000, e to the kt. Now what? Well, we can't just figure out, we can't plug 6 in because we don't know what k is. All right? Our goal is to figure out what p at 6 is, is, so I'd like to plug 6 in for t, but I don't know k. And that's where the other piece of information will come in. We'll use the p at 2 to figure out what k is. p at 2 is 2,000 e to the 2t. Plugging 2 in for t, for, uh, sorry, 2k. Plugging 2 in for t. So I plug 2 in for t. I get this, but we're told that this had better be 4,000. So that's 4,000. So this is an equation that just has k in it, so we should be able to figure out what k is. We'll divide both sides by 2,000. If either the 2k is 2, take the natural log of both sides. If I take the natural log of both sides, it looks like this. Come up over here. If I take the natural log of this, the 2k comes down. Natural log e. So 2k natural log e is equal to ln2. Natural log of e is 1, so 2k is ln of 2, and k is ln2 over 2. So k is ln 2 over 2. If they're, often k is going to be a funny number like this uh, that involves a natural log because when we work these problems out, we're generally going to take the natural log to get k down out of the exponent. Uh, and so this is not an unusual value for k. We're not done. We haven't figured out the end of the problem yet. Now we know what k is, so we can plug that back in for k right here. So 2000 e to the kt. Now we know that p of t is 2,000 e to the kt, where k is ln2 over 2, multiplied by t. So what is p at 6? 2,000 e to the ln2 over 2, all multiplied by 6. Just plugging 6 in. If you plug this into a calculator, you'll find that it is, in fact, more than the 6,000, like I claimed that it ought to have been. This is the general strategy for most of these problems. <clears throat> A couple of different things, though, can come up when we're trying to do these. We may have a, a situation where we're talking about a half-life. Many, uh, many things in exponential growth or decay, we'll find that this is a decay situation, uh, uh, involve a half-life. If we start with a certain amount of it, it, if it decays exponentially. exponentially. Uh, radioactive decay behaves this way. Uh, medicine decay in the body often behaves this way. It's what we start out with, uh, after a certain amount of time, half of it is, is left. And that's always the same no matter how much we start. If we start with 1,000 grams, in 10 years, half of it is left. If we start with 20 grams, in 10 years, half of it is left. Uh, it's, uh, it's, a, uh, it's, it's just a feature of an exponential decay situation. Uh, no matter how much we start with, the time it takes for it to, to break down to half as much as we started with is always the same. And so let's look at a case like this. Uh, suppose that we have a medicine, and again, this is often how things will work in the body. We're going to look at examples like this a lot more in the future, actually when we move into uh, chapter 8 as well. Suppose that we have a medicine and the initial amount is 20 grams. It has a half-life of 3 hours. All right, so in 3 hours, half of it is left. 
So how much is left after 10 hours? That's our question. Okay, so we have to fit this into our exponential growth and decay model. Uh, we should be able to make an estimate of what the answer should be right away. If the half-life is three hours, that means that after three hours, we're going to be down to 10 grams. After six hours, we'll be down to five grams. After nine hours, we'll be down to two and a half grams, right? So each three hours, it's going in half. So after nine hours, it's a two and a half. So at 10, it should be less than two and a half. Not a huge amount less, but uh, that's, that's our estimate of what it should be based on the idea of half-lives. Okay, it's still a half-life means exponential uh, decay. So we will look at, so now I'm going to say A at T for amount rather than a population. Same basic idea. The amount of this medicine at time T will be the initial amount A0 E to the KT. Now, a few things here about this. When we're talking about decay, when things are going down, we're usually going to put a negative sign up there, e to the negative kt to indicate that it's decay. It's actually not mathematically necessary but because this constant uh, could be positive or negative on its own. But if we include the negative here, that reminds us that it's decay, e to the negative x is going down rather than going up. Uh, so the k again would take care of it, uh, but the fact that it's there reminds us that it's exponential decay and by doing so ensures that the k value is actually positive. Okay, so the initial amount is 20, so that means that I can say right away that a at t is 20 e to the negative kt. All that's left is to figure out what k is. If I can figure out what k is, then I'm fine because then I'm just going to plug 10 in for t because I want to know how much I have at time 10. We're going to use the half-life fact that the half-life is 3 hours to figure out what k is. So if the half-life is 3 hours, how do we use that in, in my equation? Well, that means that at time 3, I better have 10. That's, that's what I pointed out earlier. After three hours, I'm going to have 10 grams left. So the amount of time three is 10. So that gets me the second point that I can use. It's very similar to what we were looking at in the previous example. We started out with a population of 2,000. In two years, the population was 4,000. Uh, so, so this is exactly the same. It's just described differently. So A3 is 10 which means that I can just plug in a at 3 and I get 20 e to the negative k times 3 and that better be equal to 10. Divide both sides by 20 e to the negative 3k is 1 half. Take natural log of both sides that negative 3k comes down natural log of e is 1 and I get natural log of 1 half. So I did a couple steps there, I took natural log of both sides, exponent comes down, and natural log of E is 1. So the K is natural log of 1 half divided by negative 3. Now, we can do a few things to clean that up, it's not necessary, this is fine, this is correct. Uh, the natural log of 1 half is natural log of 2 to the negative 1, right? 2 to the negative 1 means 1 over 2. And then I can, by my exponent rules, bring that down and it becomes negative natural log 2 over negative 3, which is natural log 2 over 3. I did say that k would be a positive value because of the, the negative that we put out front, and that's how we can see it looking like a positive value. Again, it's okay. Uh, this is the right answer. I'm not going to mark anything off if you leave it like that. Uh, and um, the homework system will also accept it if you leave it like that. But if we want to, if we want to think about this negative as indicating decay and seeing this as a positive value, that's some algebra that would let us do that. So this is our k value, ln two over three. 
which means that A T is the initial amount 20 times E to the negative K ln 2 over 3 all times T. So the amount after 10 hours is 20 E to the negative ln 2 over 3 times 10. On the homework system, you'd have to figure out what that is and, and plug it in, um, round it to whatever it asks, but that's the whole process. Okay, so let's look at another one. We might also Rather than talking about a half-life, we might talk about a doubling time. Very similar idea. All right? Rather than how long does it take to have half of what we started with in an exponential decay situation, I might say how long does it take to double? Uh, it, it's exactly the same idea, but if it's a doubling time, then it's growth because things are growing. Uh, so we'll still have a t is equal to a zero e to the k t. Now we're, we're going to leave it as positive because it's exponential growth. Uh, but if I have a doubling time, suppose that I say doubles, this is the initial amount is 200 and it doubles in five days. So that means that a t is 200 e to the kt. If it doubles in five days, that's telling me that a at five is two times the initial amount. So a at five is twice what we started with, which will be 400. So that's telling me that um, if a at five is 400, a at five is uh, 400, but a at five will be 200 e to the 5k. And then we can go through exactly the same process. k is the only thing that's unknown here. Solve for k. Well, then we have uh, the full function that describes the situation and we can answer any question we need to from there. But let's actually ask a slightly different question here. Uh, how long until we reach uh, a is 1,000. Well, let's uh, let's be a little bit less. Uh, let's say is uh, 850. How long until the amount gets to 850? If we start with 200 and it doubles every five days, how long will it take until we get to 850? Let's actually answer that question, which means we do have to solve for k. We've seen what to do here a few times. If I divide by 200, I get two is e to the 5k. Which tells me if I take the natural log of both sides, I get ln2 is 5k. By bringing the exponent down, natural log of e is 1. So the k is equal to ln2 over 5. Now I know k, I can plug that in for my k value in the formula amount at time t is the initial amount 200 e to the k which is ln2 over 5 times t. How long until a is 850? This is a little bit different than what we were asking before. Uh, before we, we said how much do we have after 5 days or 10 days or, or whatever. Now we're saying that the amount is 850 which is going over for the left hand side. So this is slightly different. We're plugging 850 in for the amount. And now we're going to solve for t. It says how long. t is our time variable. So we'll solve for t here. It looks a little bit messy, but it's really the same thing that we just did a minute ago. These are all just numbers. We're going to divide by 200 and we get 850 over uh, 200, which is 85 over 20, is e to the ln 2 all over 5 times t. Same idea as before. Um, we'll take the natural log of both sides. If I take the natural, because t is up in the exponent, and we would like to solve for t, 
I take the natural log of both sides, I get natural log of 85 over 20. The exponent comes down and I get natural log of 2, all divided by 5, all times t. And now we're essentially done. Just be careful of where you're, what's being in the natural log and what's not. Over here it's both because that was the number that we took the natural log of. Over here the 5 is in the denominator. So t, if I multiply by the reciprocal, is 5 times natural log 85 over 20, all divided by the natural log of 2. Whatever that works out to be is the answer. Okay, uh, one more. <clears throat> Sometimes the growth rate is described in terms of a percentage uh, rather than a specific amount. Suppose that the uh, initial population is 500 and the growth rate is 6% per year. All right, so how much after eight years? If the growth rate, so if it's growing at, the 6% means that it's 6% of whatever we have. And so that's exactly what exponential growth is described by. The rate of growth is a, is a proportion of what we actually are starting with uh, when we measure the rate of growth. So really, these are all the same questions. They're just the, the initial information is given to you in a slightly different form. If the growth rate is 6% per year, what that means is that P at 1, after 1 year, we have the initial 500 plus 6% of 500. So I can actually figure out what that is. That's 500. Well, 6%, 6 times 5 is 30, so that's going to be um, uh, 6 times 5%, 6% uh, of 500 will be 30. We're going to end up with 30. So that's 530. So now I have the, the population after one year. I have the initial population. I have the population after one year. I have the two points that I need. I need a, the initial amount and then an amount, an amount sometime in the future. And from that, all things are the same. We'll use this to figure out what k is. p of t is p0 e to the kt. p0 we're given is 500. We use the second point to figure out what k is and then we can answer every question that we need to answer. And that's what we got for exponential growth and decay. We'll see you next time.